of each one. This one, um, the first one we'll start with, I think it's an interesting one. It says, uh, from Anne, if you could give us all a one-word piece of advice for our own science storytelling, what would it be? And P.S., thanks for showing us how sexy science is. I don't think that referred to your shirt, but it's okay. <laughs> um, so, one, you know, that we can probably do. One word, I guess we can go across, or uh, if you want. One, any, any, well, it doesn't have to be everyone. Anyone want to give a one-word piece of advice? Yes, go ahead. Algebra. Learn algebra. Ooh. Ooh, I got one word. Yep, I got one word. That one word is ambition. That is, that is something not encoded by any practicing exam in the school system, yet in fact, if you look at the most successful people there ever were, they are not the ones necessarily who got straight A's. Those are the ones who had ambition, which overrides it all. Yeah, okay. I agree. It's a long word, but it's a good one. Um, I, I would add, the, I would say passion. Uh, I think, you know, in the terms of storytelling, too many people, we said this last night too, too many people, I think, are afraid to inject their own story or their own passion when they're talking about it at science. But if you don't talk about what you're interested in, no one else is going to be interested in it. Empathize. What? Empathize, because the best people, the best teachers uh, of science and the best writers about science are the ones who can empathize with people who don't quite get it yet. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> any other, any other, anyone else want to throw in? You've been I jumping ahead. No, I would, I, I would yeah, just I, say I, just yeah, Richard. Yeah. What? I was going to say em empathize in exactly for the same reason, but I'll say instead poetry then. Poetry. Excellent. Excellent. Anyone? Don't I have would to? just say that it, you should be able to tell it so that your mother can understand it. <laughs> hey, that's good. My mother never listens, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> And if your mother's a theoretical physicist, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> she should tell you then. Yeah. All right, fine. Thanks. Okay, here's one that's actually a little bit related um, to and and but uh, to what Neil was just talking about. But I think it, it, we can expand on it. I've always and he said I've always wanted to be an astronautical en engineer, but I am horrible at math. But I've got lots of passion. Can this dream ever be a reality? And where do I start? So it's an interesting, you know, I guess I'll start with that. I mean, I think, math, as, as Bill said, you know, math is the language of science, and I think you, you, you have to be able to ha be adept at it. Math is the language of the universe. Yes, you're right. I agree with you. Brian? I agree, but, 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 but let me just finish, and then we can, uh, uh, that, too many people think that um, you have to be a mathematical wizard to be uh, even a physicist, I mean, much less an engineer. <laughs> but, um, uh, but uh, I took a lot you know, it, it takes all types. Uh, I know people who won the Nobel Prize. I know people, y y you don't have to be the best mathematician in your class. You don't have to be a whiz. It takes all types to do science. And then well, any stereotype just doesn't work. If you're interested, do it. What's that have to do with you knowing Nobel laureates? Who were, who were not the best in their class. Oh, fine, thank you. And, okay. and who weren't necessarily even that strong in math. Okay. But the other thing, I'll just say, you say you're bad at math, I bet you're not that bad. And I just want to remind you that there's, when it comes to math, there's no substitute for practice. It sucked for me, <laughs> it sucks for, I mean, you just have to practice. So when you come to me, you come to me and say, oh, I'm bad at math, I am open-minded, of course, but skeptical. I'll bet you can do it, whoever you are. You know, that's an important point. We, we, we were talking about it last night, too, that, and, and it touches on what you said. You know, I like science museums because, often because they show science is fun, but science is, is hard work, like anything, to do, like music, like anything else, to do it well. And it takes a lot of work. So you just, and if you don't enjoy it, you can't do the work. But, but just enjoyment alone isn't enough. You've really got to be willing to work at it. I think what's really going on here is, People presume that in order to be good at, in order, they presume that if the math is not coming easy, that therefore you'll never learn it. And, and I meant it literally that math is the language of the universe. 
And it's like any other language, especially a language that does not share the Roman alphabet. So, for example, if you wanted to study Chinese, it looks completely intractable at first. It looks like Greek. It, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so, and you can ask the question, how long does it take one to become fluent in Chinese if you're not Chinese yourself? And so it can take years, and five years, almost ten years, if you never go to China. You go to China maybe five years of intensive exposure, and you've never done that with math. Imagine that level of exposure to math, what kind of fluency you would have at the other end of that pipeline. So at least give yourself the opportunity that any person learning a foreign language would give themselves before you turn around and say you're not good at math. Brian, do you <laughs> get me started. Yeah, you don't want to get him started. I, mean, I, I know that from experience. Um, you're actually the only, you're a professor of math as well as, as, well as physics, probably the only one on the table. Yeah, and the here. question that comes to mind for me is, how do you know that math is the language of the universe? I was going to say, what about I, the multi? The universe told me. <laughs> Pretty okay. good first approximation, I'll tell you. <laughs> no, okay, we're now doing before, science before by revelation. Go, Lawrence, but, before you go, I'm yeah. just wondering, because I, I have a question about this. Yeah. Could you imagine that one day far in the future we encounter some alien civilization and they say, hey, show us what you've done to understand the universe, and we bring out our math books with all our theorems and physics, and they turn around and say, math, we tried that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it takes you just so far. <laughs> <laughs> And the real way to do it is like this. I would say that whatever that real way is, it's well, not manifest to us at this moment. And until that day happens, where an alien tells us how backwards we are, all I can say is that the math that we did invent out of our human brain, as you surely know, Eugene Wigner said, the unreasonable the effectiveness, effectiveness of, of mathematics in describing the universe, the fact that it works at all is sufficient enough for me. But, 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 no, but I'll, I'll, here, I want to I wanna, I wanna have a no It's just because, wait, it's just because you still can't figure just out your string bigger. theory. Back in don't your come crying to me. Back in don't come crying to me. You can't figure it out. Well, in fact, 